is this going to be worse than the depression in the 1930s? And what does that mean for socialist mass organizing and party building? Okay, let me let me take a shot at that mm -hmm. one. Um, we we don't know. We don't have a crystal ball. Uh, we can't say, but you can see with certainty that we have entered a major recession. The unemployment rate that's been envisioned by the Federal Reserve of St. Louis is a 32% unemployment rate, 32%, one out of every three workers. In the Great Depression, the number of unemployment, the unofficial, the official unemployment was 25%. So even based on those numbers from the Federal Reserve Bank of St. Louis, if true, would indicate uh, something even greater than the depression. When the depression started though, there was no unemployment insurance. There was no social security. Workers even then did not have the right to organize unions. That came with the passage of the Wagner Act at the same time as the Social Security Act and unemployment insurance in 1935. The slogan of the Communist Party in 1933 was fight, don't starve, because literally thousands of people, thousands of people during the depression were starving to death on the streets, including large numbers of children. So society has shifted and changed and developed as a consequence of the labor movement, as a consequence of the fight of, of labor, of the fight of the unions, later because of the fight of the civil rights movement in particular, which was largely responsible for the passage of Medicare, the Medicare bill in 1964. Uh, so there is a greater social cushion than what existed at the beginning of the, of the Great Depression. We should also remember that the government uh, introduced uh, work programs and put millions of workers to work for public uh, public projects like the building of dams and hot, and uh, roads and and bridges. Many of those are considered landmark pieces of the U.S. infrastructure. Uh, that was able to stimulate the economy somewhat, but then the capitalist economy crashed again in 1937. The depression started in 29. It started to pick up again. The economy started to pick up a little bit because of these programs in 34, 35. In 37, it crashed once again. And the only way the capitalist economy could emerge was the full militarization of society vis-a-vis -vis the preparation for and the engagement of World War II. Uh, again, uh, a war that took 90 million lives in about five years. Uh, so we don't know exactly where we're going, but we do know this will be the biggest economic contraction or recession or depression in any of our lifetimes. And what has been laid bare is the brutal, cruel realities of capitalist inequality that kind of go on and on and on and grind down the poor and the working class, the poor people's campaign argues and estimates with great research that 140 million workers uh, live either in or near poverty. That's during the good times. That's during the economic expansion. And uh, if we're going through a major economic contraction, it won't be 140 million. It will be over 200 million or 250 million. Again, in this, the richest country in the world. But the government isn't doing what the governments in France are doing. Think about what, I'll, I'll end on this note, think about what Emmanuel Macron, who's no friend of labor, he's been fighting against the French workers who have been on general strikes to defend their pensions. He's been confronted by the Yellow Jacket movement. He's a, he is a banker's banker, politician, apologist. But he is saying the state will assume the financial burden of the working families. Why is he saying that? Why is Macron saying that? It's because the government fears the workers. The government fears the French workers. If the American government fears the American workers, the way the French government fears the French workers, we can see all sorts of concessions and reforms being granted by the bourgeoisie to the masses. As Roosevelt did in the 30s, Roosevelt was afraid of a socialist revolution in the United States. It wasn't a, a, a charity gift to the working class. It was fear of social uh, 
unrest and it was fear of the growth of communism and socialism in particular. That's why some section of the ruling class said, no, let's make these concessions. The bottom line for us is without knowing, and we don't have a crystal ball, what the next period will be. We know it's going to be very, very bad. There's going to be a period of intense class struggle. And we, the socialist movement, with working class folks all over the country, have to make sure the government fears us rather than we, the people, fearing the government. If we fear the government, we get nothing. If the government fears the people, yes, we can get big concessions. But as Eugene pointed out, big concessions given to by the bourgeoisie at a given moment will be taken back again at another moment. And we can see that's been the trajectory of the last 30 or 40 years where our unions have been set back and wages have stagnated. That's why the working class is so poor. If we win something now, the bourgeoisie will take it back later. That's why we have to have a new system, the system of socialism. It's not a pipe dream. It's not utopian. It's completely possible. And in fact, the United States of America, with all of its great riches, with all of its great riches, its ill-begotten wealth, the material foundations for socialism are laid here more than in any other economy anywhere in the world. So we have to fight for the immediate reforms to make life possible for masses of people, and at the same time, not simply fight for reforms. We have to fight for radical revolutionary transformations, and that's what socialism really is.